conference began in 1980 with 40 writers, aspiring writers. And the um, university uh, vice chancellor had said to me, the portals of the university are open for all to enter. So I challenged him and said, did you really mean that? And if so, could I possibly have some of the rooms on campus for a weekend? I'd like to invite uh, Douglas Adams and Terry Pratchett and lots of wonderful writers to the campus so they can see what writing's all about. I've nurtured it for 30 years and I've seen so many people become published as a direct result of the advice and support that they've got from the Writers' Conference. We've had over 100 people publish mainstream, not hobby writers, people that just want to write about their own experiences in life. You write from the soul and many things that we have inside ourselves need to come out. So it's a tremendous therapy as well. I've known Terry for a number of years, and he likes to come and be with writers. He was in his element today, meeting people and regaling people with his ideas and getting feedback. Uh, he's such a man of the people, and he's so self-effacing and generous and kind, and he said, yes, of course I'll come. Well, I've been here before uh, on, on, a, on a Harley Davidson, <laughs> but you know, there comes a time in a man's life when he just doesn't like sliding along the road on his teeth. I've had a, a fun time here today talking to people that want to talk and, and, are, and, and are talking about writing and how you write and all that kind of thing. That's super nuts for somebody like me. Mind you, it started, I had to get up at something like quarters of six in the morning. You know, I, I'm a writer. We, we don't think that there's two six o'clocks in one day. Duffy I've known for quite a number of years and uh, she has said yes I'll, I'll come I would love to come and she like Terry has the same personality they're very humble people and very willing to talk with anybody about writing if you really value good literature then you want to be with the best who write good literature and that's 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 my ethos I think The idea of a writers' conference where aspiring writers um, can meet writers who are already kind of publishing and um, living the kind of writer's life, um, and also meet publishers and agents, is just a wonderful um, opportunity to, to network and to make friendships and an exploration, I think, of, of what it means to be a writer. The poetry reading is, is how most poets make, make their living. Um, and secondly, it's where the poetry really comes alive between the person writing the poem and, and the, the living audience. It's always a pleasure to meet people who read the books and to be reminded of what they get out of them, um, uh, which is what I'm hoping they'll get out of them, uh, and to, to hear also what they have to say about them and to see uh, what their approaches to the books are. I'm writing them for them and for me. So there's the, the two people, two sets of people to consider. There's just one of me and rather more of them. Uh, but we're in a sort of partnership in which uh, we're trying to get what we want. People have different approaches to the whole business of writing. What works for one person doesn't work for another. This stuff is done by human beings like me. They're not like men half a mile high made of gold. So if human beings can do it, and I'm a human being, I can give it a go. I love Winchester for lots of different reasons, and one of them is the, this group of cultural events which work together, and the Writers' Conference is an important part of that. This is a literary city. Um, you know, we've got Keats and Jane Austen, and there's also 63 people who earn a living through writing in this city. They're journalists, they're crime fiction writers, and fantasy writers, 
and they live their quiet life in the city. But there's something about Winchester. There's that literary air. There's it's the old buildings, it's books, it's the wonderful old cathedral library where you can go and put your hand on these books that have been hand done in the 10th century. I mean, that's an inspiration for any writer, isn't it? I just hope that the conference goes from strength to strength and that there are enough people to support it long into the future um, because it's so worth, worthwhile to do to see all these people come together and network together and take away those ideas and not keep them to themselves but tell all the writer circles and their writers groups and their library groups what they heard. So it'll just go out like a ripple in the pond and many other people will say, oh, I'm ready to come next year. The tradition is called paying forward, make, give, helping the next generation. I mean, Arthur C. Clarke and Mike Moorcock, you know, were gracious enough to, to chat with me when I was a spotty adolescent. <laughs> and so I, you know, I remember that sort of thing. And this really, is very similar to that. I think there's something lovely about the book as an object, and I think it's really deep within us to, um, to have and own a book. I love to feel books, and to be able to open a book and feel its spine and smell it, and be able to put it on your shelf and say, that's my book, I'm proud of it, you know, that's wonderful. Maybe reading books and having the simple pleasures in life um, might not be a bad thing.